Please help me welcome Florian Rajepi. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for that wonderful introduction, Ms. Shanier. And Mr. Lovett, thank you for having me here. Um, it's a great pleasure to be back. Uh, it's been 10 years since I left this place. And um, um, some things have changed. Some things have uh, wonderfully remained the, the same. Um, I also wanted to uh, give an announcement for those people who are here in St. Jay for the first time. It's going to get really cold. So. <laughs> <laughs> brace yourselves, be prepared. Um, Ms. Shanier uh, mentioned something about um, conflict, and that's something that I've been studying quite a bit. Uh, my master's thesis was on uh, elementary education um, in a conflict area in Macedonia. Um, I've been very interested in understanding conflict because I've been a part of it. Um, I've lived through two uh, wars, uh, one in Kosovo and one in Macedonia. I've, I've been directly involved through my family. Um, Etc. Um, so what I want to say, first things I want to talk about conflict is a couple of misconceptions that, that people have about it. Uh, the first one is that people think that conflict is when someone fights. Um, that's a misconception. Um, there's a reason why two people fight. So it's not the visible part that we see which represents a conflict. It's what happens before that. Um, in our field we call these uh, indirect violence or invisible violence. And this happens quite a bit uh, in, country, in countries where there's oppression. Okay? It happens through structure, through institutions, and it happens through culture. Uh, for example, when I was a younger boy, um, I wasn't allowed to go into one of the public pools because I'm from a certain nationality. Um, and that certain nationality is seen and perceived as uh, dirty. So that's the culture of violence that we talk about. That obviously creates some type of emotion um, that you want to let out and uh, people that can't control and they can't deconstruct and they can't understand it um, show it in uh, violent ways. Um, the other misconception is that when there is no violence there is peace. This is not true. Okay? No violence doesn't mean peace. Uh, conflict is all around us and we need to understand how to transform it. Okay? We need to com uh, come up with creative solutions to transform conflict. Um, so these are two things I wanted to, to say regarding conflict. Now I've been doing a lot of work with youth. Um, I'm, a, I'm an English teacher, uh, which has been wonderful. I have about 40 students. And in my research, um, I, I decided to do a little bit of research on, on figuring out what the elementary school system in Macedonia is like. Um, and, I, and I've found out a lot of things that uh, actually create this very uh, violent environment within the school system. Uh, one of the main things is that the school system in Macedonia is segregated. That means that one part of the population goes to school at one time, and then when they leave, the other part of the population goes. This is based on ethnicity. So you have two weeks uh, of the month, Albanians going in the morning, Macedonians in the afternoon, and then the next two weeks, Macedonians in the morning, Albanians in the afternoon. Now this separation creates a lot of issues, uh, primarily because these kids live next to each other but don't know anything about one another. Right? So, they're, so they're, um, they're bombarded with this information about the other, which is usually dehumanizing. Um, so they go to school thinking that the other person is the enemy, they have nothing, um, no interaction with them, yet have such strong emotions and feelings. Uh, one of the things when I was a student in, um, in high school, uh, one of the things we had was this wall in our chemistry class. Um, and I usually call it as the, what we use today as Facebook, it used to be hate book, because we used this wall to express our emotions towards the other side. We knew that the other students were coming after us, so we would write messages to one another, and we'd, we would organize fights, and we would uh, write hateful messages uh, in, in the shape of stories and, and verses, etc. cetera. Um, and this was, all, this was all a problem that was created by separating us. Only later, when I got to Seeds of Peace and I started to talk to people and I started to realize how things work out, um, I realized that one of the best ways to have a safe environment is to get to know one another. Uh, and that has helped quite a bit. Um, I've done some work with uh, Iraqi and American students, I've done some work with Israeli and Palestinian students, and they very often say, well, I didn't know you were so similar to me. 
Um, and this is something that happens quite a bit in schools. Um, I don't have much time, right? Okay. I prepared this 40 minute presentation and I realized I have like five minutes. <laughs> um, so that, this separation and this type of environment actually has such an impact on the character of a person. When a person is not uh, friendly and close to someone else, then they're not friendly and close to themselves. And this is something that's happening in Macedonia quite a bit. Uh, students are becoming very isolated. They become very closed. Uh, they don't interact with, with, with other students, with teachers, and they don't even want to take part in class. And I'm realizing something um, when, I'm, when I started teaching my students. Um, I would ask them to do group work, and I would say, well, you can speak out loud, you can talk to one another, because they're used to whispering. So wh while, I, while I was staying in the classroom, they would whisper to one another. As soon as I'd walk outside of the classroom, people would start screaming and yelling and talking. Then I'd walk in the classroom, and they'd whisper to each other. And I'd walk out, and they'd start talking out loud. And I started joking around with them. I would put my head in, and they would quiet down. I would walk outside, and they would start talking. I noticed this in one of the principals that I interviewed. When I was interviewing him, and this is the reflection, that's, this is what, what happens with the character of a person. When I was interviewing him, when I was sitting close to him, he would straighten up and talk to me like in a very robotic manner. When I would lean back, he would relax and talk. In, very, in a very relaxed and comfortable manner. And this is something that get, people get used to because those interactions have been missing when they're young. Um, I heard the bell ring, so I'm, I'm gonna finish up. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say here is uh, that in, in this school, and this is something that I got out of, out of it quite a bit, in this school you have, uh, this year you have 27 different countries represented. 27, you're like, you're like National Geographic. Um, think of the possibilities of the things you can learn just by talking to one another. And even though we might think that that's not such an important thing because we have to focus on the books and whatnot, it's one of the most important things because the friendships that you create here, you might not be able to create later on. Okay? And these friendships would carry you in so many things that you will do in the future. So think about it for a second when you have a time. If there's someone that you haven't talked to, go talk to them. I'll be around walking around, so I would love it if someone came and talked to me about stuff. Whatever it is. Um, it's one of the most important and most valuable things that, you're, you, that you are going to build throughout your years in school here, and that's your friendships. And that will lead you to a lot of new doors. Um, and believe it or not, that has happened with me. I was just a young student, didn't know about stuff, didn't know about anything. Back again. So um, I don't want to take much more of your time. Thank you so much for listening, and happy uh, holidays. And they spent a lot of evenings during winters and for those two years in the stands of Alumni Gym being really proud that you were representing our school on the basketball court, but never any prouder than I am this morning. So thank you for your words. Uh, thanks for coming back. It's good to have you here, and I hope they take you up on your offer to, uh, to talk to you um, and all of your advice. So thanks again. Um, those are very well said. Very proud of you. Thanks.